Hi, how's it going? Hello everyone. Today I'll be doing some more testing with the Hitbox Synergic MIG 200 Pro, the S Welder First S MP200, and the Fronius Transteel 2200. I'll be testing stick welding output, plus I'll test all three with 6010, even though the Fronius doesn't recommend 6010 with the Transteel 2200. I'll also test the TIG lift start characteristics to see how they compare. So let's jump right into it, starting with stick welding. The hitbox has around 170 amps of max output, and the display closely matches the output you get. And while I didn't think to have the camera actually show the display on the welder at the same time as the amp clamp, the display does show real-time amp draw while welding, and it's pretty accurate. The amperage delivered as compared to the setting is a few amps off when set under 100 amps, but it's still not bad at all. Based on my testing, I would say that the hitbox either doesn't have hot start, or it's so brief as to be pretty much pointless. The amperage seems to go right to the setting and stay there. And this is borne out by the amp draw from the wall as well, which doesn't go temporarily high as it would if it was briefly delivering higher wattage. I didn't have a lot of luck running 6010 with the hitbox. Even on the 6010 setting, it ran pretty poor. I also tried changing the arc force setting in both 6010 and 7018 modes, and I didn't notice much difference. Running on 120 volts, I set the welder to around 85 amps, which is a reasonable setting for 332nd 7018 electrodes. It ran just fine, and it draws around 28 to 30 amps. So that's usable on a 20 amp breaker, but it's definitely pushing the breaker a bit, and it will trip eventually if you run very long welds. Next up, I tested the Yes Welder MP200, and as I found when reviewing the welder, Despite claiming 200 amps on 240 volts, it only provides 160 amps max. The amperage gets closer to accurate the lower you go, but it's never quite spot on. It will run a 532nd 7018 when maxed out, but it's a shame that while it claims to have the highest stick output of the three welders, it actually has the lowest. Like the others, it works fine at lower amperages, running a 1 16th inch 7014 just fine. Like the hitbox, any hot start feature this welder may have is so brief as to basically be non-existent. Again, this is judging not only by the feel when starting a rod, but also the readings going right to the set point and staying there. One bright spot is that the Yes Welder runs 6010, the best of the three. It's difficult to get a 6010 rod going, but once started, I could mostly keep it going. It ran better if it was a bit on the hot side, and it didn't tolerate a very long arc, but I seem to have better luck with 6010 today than I did during my initial review. I still probably wouldn't recommend this welder for someone who specifically needs to run 6010, but it does run it better than the other two machines. On 120 volts, when set to provide about 85 amps out, it drew a similar current to the hitbox, around 30 amps or so. Next up is the Transteel 2200. The setting maxes out at 194 amps on 240 volts. Unsurprisingly, it provides the max output it claims, and the accuracy of the amperage provided, as compared to the setting, is quite good. I also adjusted the arc force setting, and it made a noticeable difference, allowing for a slightly more focused, aggressive feeling arc, or a smoother one. The hot start setting defaults to 150% of the set current for 0.5 seconds, and it's very obvious in use, and when looking at the amp meter, both on the output and on the current that it draws from the wall. There is no mistaking the increased initial current when welding, even when maxed out at 194 amps, it clearly cranks out far more than that for a half second. The Transteel will not run 6010. No surprise, since they outright say not to use 6010 with this machine, but they're not kidding. It actually starts a 6010 rod easier than the other machines, probably because of the hot start, but the arc is very difficult to keep going. It sputters and goes out constantly. On 120 volts, when set at 85 amps, it draws under 20 amps from the wall. This means that you can run a 332nd 7018 with this welder running on 120 volts with no fear of tripping a 20 amp breaker. Moving on to TIG. Unfortunately, I won't be testing TIG on the hitbox today. 
I ordered a torch for it, and when it arrived, I made sure it was correct. It is a Tulium torch, and my first impressions were positive, but unfortunately it was defective. When I got everything set up and tried to purge the gas and set the flow, no gas would flow. After a bit of troubleshooting and taking different things apart, it became clear that it was an issue somewhere in the hose, not with the torch itself and not with my regulator. The gas fitting that connects to the DINs connector here was plastic and I couldn't remove it without breaking it. So I did, <laughs> I broke it. Unfortunately, it's not screwed into the fitting, it's actually glued in. And once I destructively removed it, I've confirmed that this little plastic elbow is the problem. It is actually defective, it's made incorrectly, the hole does not go all the way through. <laughs> so this little elbow cannot pass any gas, so there was no, um, uh, you know, there's no way to make this work and actually flow any argon. After messing with this for a while, I decided to test the Yeswalder and Fronius first, and by the time I got done, there really wasn't much time left in the day, so I, I once I get something working on the hitbox, I'll probably make a short video testing the lift start functionality of that machine, but for today, I'll just be testing the Yeswalder and the Fronius. And with that, first up is the S-Welder. As I've tested before, the unit has full open circuit voltage when in lift TIG mode. As someone else pointed out in the comments, it does seem to have a sort of lift start TIG mode, but in practice, it behaves pretty much exactly like scratch start in my opinion. When you touch the tungsten down to the piece, you get a surprisingly strong arc and a little flash of sparks, and the tungsten just sticks hard. The only difference between this and scratch start, if from my opinion, is that instead of your set current, it delivers 50 amps until you break the tungsten free, no matter what your setting is. Then it jumps to whatever the set amperage is, whether that's up or down from 50 amps. So even if it is set at just 20 amps, it will give the full open circuit voltage when you're not touching, and then it jumps straight to 50 amps when the tungsten makes contact, and it just sticks the tungsten like crazy. That doesn't mean it doesn't work. With careful technique, it can work, and here's me initiating an arc at 20 amps without sticking the tungsten. But just like scratch start, it takes careful technique to prevent the tungsten from sticking or getting eroded on the end or contaminating the piece, leaving arc marks, <laughs> that kind of thing. So it, it works about like scratch start. Moving on to the Fronius, it has a torch switch to turn the arc and gas on and off because it has a built-in solenoid, but regardless of that, it has a lift start that behaves as I have come to expect lift start to behave. Whether you touch the tungsten to the workpiece, then push the switch, then lift to initiate the arc, or if you just push the button ahead of time, then touch the tungsten down and then lift it, the result is the same. No sticking, no sparking, no drama, just touch the tungsten down, and then the arc starts when you lift away. The initial current when you touch the tungsten is 10 amps, and the open circuit voltage is 50 volts. That voltage is actually on the high side from what I've seen, but it's still much lower than the 90 volts of open circuit voltage that you have on stick, and whatever else they've done with the algorithms of the amperage curve or the calibration or whatever of the lift start, it works. Honestly, with a decent lift start, I really don't even miss high frequency start in a lot of situations, and the Fronius is an example of what lift start is supposed to be. And as you can see, the Fronius TIG amperage settings are right on, just like they are in the other modes. The Yes Welder in TIG mode has the same amperage curve as it does in stick mode. Unfortunately, I don't have time to do a bunch of TIG welding today with these machines, but the reality is the difference between getting a weld that looks like this and a weld like this is mostly down to the person holding the torch and not the machine the torch is connected to. But if you'd like me to weld up some projects with each of these welders using TIG, let me know. For me, the differences mainly come down to the little things that make a machine easier and more convenient to use to get these kind of things done. And in that regard, it isn't even close. I haven't tested TIG yet on the hitbox, but just in terms of MIG and stick, the hitbox has more power and is much more consistent than the S-Welder. It has accurate amperage settings, real-time amperage readouts on the display, and it has a full manual mode for MIG. All this makes it overall nicer to use and a bit more capable. The S-Welder does run 6010 better than either of the two, 
but it still doesn't run it great, so it's it's not a super satisfying win. The Fronius won't run 6010 at all, but in every other way, it's a massive step up over the other two. Not only features and performance, but overall fit and finish and build quality of the Fronius and the included accessories is just night and day beyond the others. And that's no surprise, it's far more expensive. But only you can decide if that makes the price difference worth it to you. Hopefully these comparison videos were at least interesting and give you an idea of what to expect out of machines like this. I'll still make a quick video to test TIG on the hitbox at some point, and if you'd like to see any other testing with these welders, let me know. And as always, thanks for watching. Take care.